I'm one of the first people to get my hands on the new Anycubic Photon Mono 2. And I got a feeling that this just might be the perfect printer for the beginner. The Mono 2 has a 2.8 inch touchscreen interface, a compact footprint, and a 6.5 by 5.6 by 3.5 inch build volume. And it has a 6.6 .6 inch 4K masking LCD screen. It was very well packaged, and it contains everything the beginner needs. And in no time, I had it all ready to be set up. What I really like about the build plate is that it has a laser engraving to help with adhesion. I thought this was a really cool feature. It's even tapered to help the resin run off when the parts are printed and hanging. The vat itself has a graduation so you can see how much resin you're adding, which I really like. And it also has little feet on the bottom to help hold it in place and if you set it down, you don't have to worry about scratching that film. A really cool thing that this came with was a screen protector. It was a bit of a pain in the ass to get it on, but I really appreciate the fact that they included this in this kit. Next up, I powered up the printer and started an exposure test. The Photon Mono 2 uses a 6.6 inch 4K masking LCD with an XY resolution of 34 microns, which provides a high resolution of 4098 by 2560 pixels and enables the user to get vivid print detail. I'm also going to be testing out the Anycubic resin. I loaded it into the printer, inserted the flash drive that came with the unit, and the first thing I did was went ahead and printed some of the onboard exposure tests. This was a famous cube. And my first print came out perfectly. Absolutely no issues at all with this cube. Everything looked great and the build adhesion was excellent with this laser etch build plate. So I cleaned it up and here you have it. Guys, if you're enjoying this video, go ahead and smash that like button. It really helps this video out. Thanks. I also printed off some more exposure tests and you can see that uh, this printer was definitely working correctly. Right behind me here is the OG Anycubic Photon. This was my first resin printer and it's been a workhorse for me. I love this thing and my wash and cure machine. So I'm thinking that this is gonna be the perfect home for the Mono 2. Now, let's get it in there now that we've got the printer all set up and this is Facility D20 where we're always making cool stuff and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make some cool stuff. So I went ahead and found some cool minis from Print Minis and I decided to print these first. Now, this printer also came with Photon Workshop Anycubic's own slicer program. So I installed it, loaded up the Photon Mono 2, and then just threw the print straight into it. Didn't spend a lot of time because I was really anxious just to get something printing. So I used all default settings that were loaded in this slicer program. I sliced it up, and you can see it has a nice preview of the layers that it's gonna print. Just had a quick look at that, and the print time here was going to be around three hours. So I loaded it into the printer and hit start. Here you can see a preview of the layer that it was printing. Then it was done. Now I like to clean off the build plate a little bit because I usually pick it up and show it to the camera here. So here you have it. Two minis, base settings, right out of the Photon Workshop, and everything came out absolutely perfectly. Build plate adhesion was great, and I got to give Print Mini some credit because they make some awesome pre-supports, and these things just slip right out. And I got to say that the washing and curing process with this resin was really straightforward and simple. A couple of minutes in alcohol, followed by a couple of minutes under the UV light. And these prints were done and I was really impressed with how smooth and crisp they were and how this resin had like a plastic like quality to it. Excellent stuff. Now guys, it's time to take a quick look at the sponsor of today's video.
When I first seen these graphic tees from Into the AM, I thought they were so cool and really vibe with my creative side that I like to showcase here at Facility D20, so it's been really cool to have them as a sponsor. I picked out a few of my personal favorite shirts, but there are so many more awesome designs on their website that you need to go check out. So click the link in my description and get 10% off these premium made tees. They also have package deals where you can get three graphic tees for $60 or three basic tees for $49.95. I've been wearing these for a while now and the prints are bright and sharp and the shirts are super soft, hang just right and you can truly feel the quality. Into the AM also has a lot of bundle packs for extra savings as well which is always awesome. Follow the link below and check them out. Print Minis also makes a model called the Orange Stalker which is a multiple part kit and I thought that printing something in multiple parts would be a great test for the dimensional accuracy and exposure settings of this printer along with the resin itself so that's what I went ahead and did. And as you can see, these prints fit together perfectly and this printer done an excellent job. Now, running a YouTube channel is a lot of work and it's really tough, but watching the facility grow makes it all worthwhile. So guys, go ahead, smash that subscribe button and drop some comments below because I love talking to you guys below the videos and I try to respond to every single person. Now it's time to jump back into Photon Workshop Slicer program and test out how well this thing can support files. So I threw in a Michael Keaton Batman. I scaled it down. I maneuvered it around the build plate. I even rotated it a little bit. All these features work excellently in the Slicer program. But the real test will be the pre-supports and automatic supports. So that's what I went ahead and did. Up top, you can see different settings. I selected the, pre the supporting settings. I kind of changed it a little bit to what I like to do. It's really quick and easy to do. And I went ahead and generated all supports. Now this is my first time using this, but just by glancing at it, it done a good job. And I can even go in and manually move, edit, delete, and add supports, which I thought was a great feature. Uh, so you can see here, that's exactly what I did. I removed one from his nose and added a couple of more on the bottom. And I was happy with that, so I continued to do the whole statue like that. And then, it printed absolutely perfectly and all the automatic supports were great. Guys, I gotta take a second here and thank the members of my Patreon. You guys rock, you really helped me bring this channel to new heights. So if you're interested in my Patreon, I'll link it below. Now, this Batman file came out awesome, but it does have a bad cut across the middle, and that's just due to the file. But, I'm pumped because Michael Keaton is back, baby. Next up, I wanted to test out the build uh, volume for the most part, so I wanted to print something that was super tall. And Arcane is one of my favorite animes ever, and I decided to go ahead and print this Jinx statue. I did the same thing, generated supports everywhere, and as you can see, it done an excellent job with the supports here. Um, there was some close to the face, so I decided to go in and just manually edit it and delete a few of those. So I managed to play around with this software program for about a week or so. And I got to say that um, for a software that comes with this printer, man, this, this software can get you going and get you printing for sure. And here you have it, almost the entire height that the printer could print. And this thing came out absolutely perfectly. Again, this resin has this like plastic-like quality to it. I really like this stuff and I'm definitely gonna be using this printer and this resin a lot in the future. It's really, really nice combo. So I've been testing this thing now for a couple of weeks. And the question is, what do I think about it? 
And is this the perfect printer for the beginner? Well, I got to say, in all honesty, this is an excellent machine. I think for the bang for your buck, under $200, that this thing is absolutely awesome. So what I like about it is the light source is a really great high quality light source is able to produce some excellent details. I really like the quality and the stability of the build plate and how it attaches to the printer. The navigation menu is really easy to use. It's got a nice small footprint. So for your first printer, it's kind of easy to handle. I like the VAT design. Um, one thing that I would change though is these screws here. I, I'm not a big fan of how these things go on, but that's a very minor thing for me. So at the end of the day, if you're looking for a great printer, check this one out and check out some more videos on my channel.